Welcome to Team Nova Circuit's first ever playtest video. Uh, this involves two team members. Um, first team member is Jeff Hertzkin. Hertzkin. That. And uh, we also have Joshua Sutherland. Hello. All right, so uh, Jeff, why don't you go ahead and explain your deck to us, and then afterwards we'll have Josh explain his deck. All right, we're uh, testing out a new Guardians Rising card, Tapu Coco GX. It's a lightning type. It's really cool. I like it. It's a... Three cost attack, three lightning energy. It has a ability that's basically like the uh, old Dragonite EX's Russian ability. Uh, when you play them from your hand, you can attach uh, as much electric energy on the field as you want, and then he has the ability to stand in the active position right away. Um, so it makes for a lot of really cool different plays in there. So. Uh, basically the main attacker of the game uh, just using him uh, basically two shot and everything does 130 um, and you get like a uh, fighting fury vault on there do an extra 10 extra health and then the special new stadium is the um, aether paradise stadium uh, conservation or something like that uh, extra uh, it does like minus 30 damage to electric and grass pokemon I believe um, so you're just kind of keeping your opponents from one shot and you in this deck kind of uh, setting up energies, max elixirs and just rushing in and uh, attacking from the front and two shot and everything. Weakness hopefully on shamans if you can target those. Um, so that's basically the main theme behind that deck. Awesome. And uh, Josh, what deck were you running? I was running a Mega Rayquaza deck. The goal of that deck is to get a turn one Hoopa into Rayquaza and Shaman setting up. Uh, Mega Rayquaza does Emerald Break 30 times the amount of bench Pokemon on 30 times the amount of bench Pokemon on your side of the field and then I had backup attackers like Jolteon EX for, with the lightning energies and then I had Raichu does 20 t Raichu Circle Circuit does 20 times the amount of 20 times 20 for each bench Pokemon on your side of the field. Explain so. the Raichu tech in the deck. Uh, it's it, The goal is to beat the mirror match with that and also just for any other Pokemon that are weak to lightning. I noticed you used it against uh, Carbink as well. That kind of helps you even though it hits for weakness but you're able to get those Carbinks off especially because they stop your full EX deck. Right too. Yeah. So, um, so this is game one. So uh, why don't you guys go ahead and Explain what's going on right now so far. So right now, um, Jeff attached an energy on his first turn and literally just passed. And I am just going off right now. This is like turn number two. And he literally has nothing but a Tabu Coco on the field. This game looks like it's going to end soon. So. Yeah, it seems like it. Jeff, do you have any comment on it? Um, is a Was it just bad draws? or? Uh, out front, it's actually a Tapu Lele out in the field there. Uh, oh, basically okay. start out with a... Um, kind of a dead hand it was basically uh energies i think uh, a couple of vs seekers and a max elixir so just like no way to kind of like attach any energy to the bench with the max elixir um just manually attaching to the front there and just kind of praying for a good top deck uh either draw support or ultra ball and anything would have been pretty good at this point um, this this uh, first game kind of ends up being a dead draw on my side. Josh kind of takes that uh, first game uh, with pretty much no effort. Uh, pretty much just like scoop this game, I think. Yeah, this game should be in your favor, Jeff, just because you know you're going to be hitting Rayquaza, and I'm sure you run Shamans probably at least probably at least three. Am I right, correct, Jeff? I run or, four Jeff? Shamans and a four Shamans. Shamans. Yeah, so I mean, you can Lysander and hit him for double I mean those are the one instead of doing the two shot knockouts you definitely got the weakness there so I see advantage your way but yeah as you said game one it looks like uh, Josh just got everything he wanted it can it can be a little bit of a closer game probably either way might be closer to a 50 50 not really sure without play testing just a little bit more um, uh, the Jolteon we find out later uh, in Josh's deck kind of makes a, a, a big play against this as I play only basic Pokemon. 
Um, I am hitting for weakness on anything but the uh, Tapu Lele's or the... Um, the Hoopas. Well, the Hoopas, yeah. and then you got the um, the Jolteon. You can't really one-shot anything except the uh, Shamans and the Rayquaza just because of weakness. Um, so he can basically... He, he, he can get ahead if he gets um, the stadiums out on the field and uh, field blower gets rid of the fighting fury belts so i'm not having that like big health buffer and the minus damage from the stadium um so if he gets those off the field he can one shot anything i set up uh again it takes like three energy attaches to um get one of these attacks off and so rayquaza is just like faster in general um so if mega ray gets set up it can just one shot everything if I'm a turn behind he can just like get ahead in prizes and sometimes there's just not much you can do from that yeah, it looks like uh, Josh did take game one like you said you just bad start it looked like and Josh really did have everything uh, so we're in game two right now and just so everybody knows we are doing um, sanctioned Pokemon rules so this is we're treating this like a full round um, so it will go into best out of three and, so, and looks like we just started game two and looks like Josh started with the Jolteon and Jeff you started with Tapu Lele yep another Tapu Lele start <laughs> not quite optimal uh, so in your opinion what's worse Hoopa or Shaman or Tapu Lele start I, I'd rather start with Tapu Lele though even though the ability sucks though I mean you lose that ability of pulling out that supporter yeah but, but the only the difference is when you had when you had the lone Jirachi start, it's literally only in there for the ability. But the difference is, if you start with Tapu Lele, you don't get the ability, but you basically get an X Ball Mewtwo EX X Ball attack. Yeah, I think it's one of the many advantages of the card. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't sometimes start with it. But Jeff, you don't run any special energies in the deck, do you? And it's two energy to start out, so you can't just no. Hit it's all straight uh, lightning energies. Uh, play twelve of them in the in the deck. Uh, running off a uh, max elixir uh engine so uh, you want to be able to pull those um at any given time you get those in your hand so generally um com if you compare it to like the turbo darks uh out there uh most of those play like 12 like guaranteed so it looks like um it's jeff's turn so jeff do you uh w what's going on here um, I think I had just played an in, um, kind of, kind of just catching this again. Uh, in we're ultra balling. Um, I didn't have anything on the bench, so you can't obviously play any max elixirs or anything like that. Um, so we're gonna ultra ball here for um, another card, and I believe we're going for the uh, Steam Siege Hoopa. I believe is what we went for here. Um, Steam Siege Hoopa has a really cool attack that kind of makes this deck uh, a little bit um, neat. You, kinda, you can kind of set up uh, one-shots. Uh, its attack does one colorless energy, and you can do 20 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, so you can start like taking 20 here and 20 there and just like setting stuff up later in the game. Um, it's also really cool to help set up because it only requires one energy, you can get him out front and then just like um, manually attach the next turn and then max elixirs the rest of the game. And then you can get the Tapu Koko a little bit later and then use his like uh, stand in ability kind of thing. Um, I think it's called uh, Arrow Trail, I think is what the ability is called. Yeah, it's called Arrow Trail. But um, as you can see, he is. Max Elixir, yeah, he's Shaman, drew a few cards, and uh, he's about to attach an energy to Tapu Lele, and from there, I think he was done with that turn, but I can't remember for sure. So. Yeah, this was a real interesting matchup, especially since with the new Guardians Rising uh, set out. I know there's a lot of hype for the Tapu Lele card, and Tapu Coco seems like it's going to be a uh, pretty decent deck um like i said it's too early to tell what meta is going to be i know earlier in the week we saw on uh, burbank that 
they were showing the top decks up in Japan. Um, I saw Lycan Rock on that list, and I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> Can't wait to work on that one. Uh, that's for another video, but um, we just wanted to get the new set going. I know it's not um, standard legal until what May nineteenth. Yep. So um, it's good to play test early, uh, kind of get the content out there early, so people can kind of you know see the new cards and what they can do. Uh, I know watching this matchup earlier, I learned a couple things and got a lot of great ideas. By just watching this one match and just seeing some of the new cards, uh, I like the new stadiums. Actually, uh, looking through this set, seeing you know, and like what most of those stadiums can do for you, I'm like, man, this is this is gonna be great. And then um, the, the Garbador hype as well with this new set. Um, I know a lot of people are calling for a ban on it, but I don't think it should be. I mean, Night March, remember that cancer? Yeah, that's literally all I would play last format, but. Again, back to the Garbodor, um, I feel like that if you don't go off with all your items like people usually do in this format, I mean, if you play conservatively, it won't be as bad as people think it is. Like, yeah, it does It does do a lot for just playing a Sycamore, tossing a bunch of stuff, plus your Ultra Ball and all that, but it won't be as bad as you just conserve your resources, basically. Yeah. So it looks like all I did was hex and pass. Yeah, all I did was hex and pass, and he's going for through this turn. So I believe I had like uh, Tapu Koko in hand at this point, and he started streaming these hexes. So I couldn't uh, play the Coco down yet and use his uh, arrow trail ability. Um, so at this point, I'm just kind of hoping to keep the active out there as long as possible um, and not get like knocked out from the active uh, saving the energy and basically just attaching a max, max elixiring as much as I can and getting as many energies out there um, early in the game um, and at this point I do uh, retreat into the Steam Siege Hoopa and start um, placing a couple of uh, damage uh, damages uh, 20 I think I go 20 to a bench and then uh, 20 on the active um, this first time around. Um, so we pretty much just uh, end the end the turn with that attack and then Josh's turn. I literally top decked a Tapu Lele, so now I can play the game again. Uh, I believe I searched through grabbing a Sycamore. Yep, I grab a Sycamore. Um, and then I'm tossing away a bunch of stuff at this point. Honestly, I feel like I should have went for N because I did toss like some sky fields and a puzzle. Yeah, something. I remember you saying that that was a really hard choice for you to second more that hand because you had a lot of good stuff in it. I think it it was this hand, right? Uh, it was yeah, it was this hand. The, this hand, and then game three. There's something else, but we'll wait till that comes around. But yeah, I did toss a bunch of stuff. I didn't. I should have just went for the N at that point. I just didn't want to. I felt like if I drew drawing more cards was better in that situation at that point. That was my mindset on that. So, but at that point, I'm ultra bowling another DC away, so I'm already regretting my sycamore. So, and there's also a uh, VS seeker there in the discard. I saw uh, kind of tough giving those away early in the game. So while we're uh, watching this, is there anything? Um, besides this deck, of course, Jeff, and the deck you're running, Josh, is there anything you're excited to see with the Guardians riding set? Um, at this point, I feel like, um, honestly, I have no idea. I like I like a lot of the cards from this new set, but mainly my favorite card is probably the uh, Tapu Lele, just because it makes Mega Ray a lot stronger, because you can just Ultra Ball for that, and then get Tapu Lele, get a Hex, Hex turn one a lot faster than you used to, so... What about you, Jeff? Um, one of my new favorite cards that I have yet to really test with, um, even as it was just like uh, revealed through the internet um, before the set came out, was this Sylveon GX. has a really cool GX attack. Um, uh, what was the name of that attack? Uh, uh, which one? 
The GX for the Sylveon. Uh, the one that bounces two bench Pokemon. Um, I can't remember the name. Uh, of that exactly. But basically, what it does is for a fairy and two colorless, you can bounce two of your bent your opponent's bench Pokemon, all cards attached to it, back into their hand. So basically, after they max elixir all that and play all their like energy on them, you can just like bounce them, and they basically have all these energies and dead cards in their hand at that point. Yeah. So like the uh, the attack um basically states that uh your p opponent um you you tell your you choose your opponent's pokemon two of them on the bench and they pick everything up attached to that pokemon so uh you can make some really cool plays with this like um a lysander so you could like lysander up like a, a shaman to the active spot and then anything on the bench with like a bunch of energies um like you could parallel city them down to three and then pick up two so they only got one in the active and one in the bench and anything they had um going for them whether it was like a lot of energies tools or whatever on there they basically just have to start over again from scratch on their bench um and kind of slows down your opponent's game there um especially like mid to late game if you were to do something like that um can really change the flow of the game for sure yeah, I know uh, this sounds like me because it's all I do, but the Lycan Rock is my favorite just because of that free, basically, Lysander ability. Um, honestly, and you guys know me, I like to build random fun decks, but uh, I have so many ideas for the deck, you know, with like maybe throwing like a de evolution spray in there or, you know, just I want to be able to control. And I already played Disrupt decks, so, you know, be able to control who the active is. And, you know, of course, I'll throw hammers in there and all that, but. If I, you know, that saves me deck space if I I want to run the Lycanroc deck without any Lysander just to try it out and just use my Lycanroc as my Lysander. Like I said, the de-evolution spray might be put in there just if I need one. But um, I'm really excited about Lycanroc though and it's just, I feel like I'm going to just have way more fun with <laughs> the disrupt factor of it. Yeah, it's definitely going to be like really interesting going into uh, a new format come next rotation after Worlds. Um, cause I think we're losing, uh, VS Seeker and the Lysander as well. Um, the Lysander I think last printed in Ancient Origins and the VS Seeker had a secret rare, um, in Roaring Skies, I believe. Yes, it, it was in Roaring Skies and the regular print was Phantom Forces. So we will be losing, more than likely, we will be losing Lysander and VS Seeker when the next rotation comes out. When the next rotation starts, because, well, yeah, um, so, yeah, so. And you're going to end up going basically back into um, kind of like an older format, like 2011-ish uh, or older, um, where you basically just play like a heavy supporter line of cards, um, and then basically anything ability-powered at that point just becomes kind of the, the go-to decks. Um cards you play from your hand, interactions with the abilities off um, Pokemon evolving, things like that. Yeah. So uh, back to the game. Uh, so where, where are we at right now, Jeff? Um, looks like we're doing uh, some more Max Elixirs, Energy Attaches, and uh, setting up for the uh, Tapu Koko play here uh, probably shortly. I, I forget if it was this turn or not. Um... Because I got the Tapu, uh, Tapu Lele out front again. Um, I believe the uh, the Hoopa had got knocked out that uh, turn before by the uh, Circle Circuit Raichu. Um, just for the exact math on the damage, I believe uh, it had like 30 on it before from a Swift, I think. No, the, what I did was I Circle Circuit, Jolteon EX had one, already has base 160. So what I did was, uh, I, no, wait, you are right. I, I swift earlier and then I, um, no, wait, no, yeah. You circle circuit for a hundred damage. It was, it was 130 HP and then I circle circuit for the knockout. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And then here you're gonna bly sander uh, poopa and just hope to stall at this point. But I do have the DC to retreat and then I believe I just stream another hex here. 
It's either that or a Lysander the Shaman. I can't remember what I do. It's like, no, yeah, it looks like I hex and then I hit for one, twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, like a hundred. So, not quite a knockout. Um, I was trying to stall you there with the uh, Lysander. Um, it does force you to kind of uh, get rid of the energy and then just go back into the uh, the attacker with the Raichu. Um, and then here I topped at the lightning energy and decided to go with the flash ray because like Jeff was saying, he, all he runs is basics. So if I go flash ray and not have that many attackers set up, he really can't do much to me. And here I play another hex and just flash ray him for another 70. So Yeah, game two seems a lot more interesting than game one was, it looks like. Uh, a lot more is going on. Yeah, definitely a, a different pace of the game for sure. Uh, I had a little bit more access to uh, supporters and draw support um, and other cards. Um, kind of the start of game two on my side was more of just like I had the energies out there and just ended up with kind of hands I had to like recycle back in with an in or such. And then the, uh, the Hex Maniac streaming kind of threw it off just a little bit at the beginning, um, preventing me from using the abilities to um, get the any other draw supports off of Tapu Lele or the Coco if I had it in hand at the time. Um, looks like I get the Jolteon out there and I'm just placing more energies out in the field. Um, and then we go for a... I think I'm about to play another Max Elixir... No, this might have been another uh, Lysander play, I believe. No, you would just Sycamore this turn, so it has to be an item card. Probably, I think it's a Max Elixir is what you went for this turn. Uh, waiting to play the card. Oh, it was, uh, no, it was Esca the Escape Rope. Rope. Yeah, the Escape Rope play. I decided to bring up the Raichu knowing you can't hit knock this out. Even with the... We forgot about the Stadium, but I knew you were only hitting for... Even if the Stadium was out, it would only be for 30. So... And if I can get a full bench, along with a Skyfield with a full bench, I can just hit for 160 and knock this out and go down to three prizes and be really far ahead at this point. Yeah, I think here's where you um, start to realize about the stadium being out there. Um, I can't even see what stadium that is, but uh, doesn't it reduce? It, yeah, it, it, it reduces, reduces 30 uh, to a, a electric believe, and grass. Yeah, here's yeah, where you explain it. Types, I believe. But I think he just gets another Skyfield here in a, in a minute. Um, yeah. I'm about to still draw on the seven. Uh, play, I see a Skyfield at hand. I gotta play that, and I just play three more Pokemon down and just knock that out this turn. And realizing he only has two energies, so I'm forcing him to have an energy and a Tapu Koko to even try and get something. Even then, he's only taking one prize, so I'm okay with that. So. Yeah, so you're feeling pretty comfortable in game two. At this point, yes. So it looks like we just got another uh, manual energy attachment for turn. So I got the three I need uh, to get something going. And I'm trying to figure out uh, from here what order of uh, cards I need to play uh, to get something going here. Um, I do get the Tapu Koko out there. Use his uh, Aero Trail ability to attach all the energies. Go to the active. Um, I'm going to knock this Raichu out, and then the only thing at that point I think he has left on the board is the uh, the Jolteon, which he can use to um, more or less kind of stall me out a couple turns with the uh, Flash Rays where I can't damage him um, with the Jolteon. Um, <clears throat> kind of devoted everything to the Jolteon, the Raichu. Um, nothing on the Mega Rayquazas at this point, I believe. Um... And then we just kind of go for a bigger hand. And... Forget exactly what I was looking for at this point. Probably uh, some more max elixirs. Checking to see what's left in the uh, discard. What I've used so far. Um, I think I was also trying to maybe dig for... Uh, some more uh, Fighting Fury belts to get the extra health on the Tapu Koko. Um, I believe I was also maybe looking for the uh, next stadium in the deck as well. Uh, 
Um, so he's just super added a Tapu Koko and two energies back in. He's going to take the knockout, but um, yeah, like Jeff was saying, I devoted my attackers as Raichu and Fla Jolteon, which I feel like was a fine, but if because the Mega Ray, like Jason was saying, is weak to lightning. So if he one-shots, he can easily one-shot that. And I, he can just blow me out of energies, forcing me to have like a DC and a Mega Turbo. And he also has that creative little card. He played Echo Arm to get back a couple Fury Belts and stuff. And uh, he trainers Mills for the stadium again, which is pretty cool. So basically just setting up the next turn after I knock this out, um, trying to reduce any more damage that he could possibly do, even though he was going to have a flash ray coming into this, uh, was hoping to do um, just like less damage on his end. Um, with the flash ray and the stadium in play and everything, uh, he'd only be doing 40 damage, and it would take uh, a good like, um, six turns or so to get like a knockout with that in play again he just like top decks the uh, stadium though um, kind of nullifying uh, my dig through the uh, rest of the deck there for that so I taught like Jeff was saying I top decked the stadium literally which was what I needed I decided to rescue stretcher three Pokemon back in the deck and scoundrel rain to get Dragonite back in so I can just hopefully hit like at this point I feel like I was just going for a DC Mega Turbo to try and get the knockout just to wipe him out of energies except for like one I think on the bench Tapu Lele yeah so I can't remember exactly what I did but I think that's what I did um so evolve uh Dragonite use the ability pull up Get back a Pikachu and a Shaman. I decided to Shaman for three. Yeah, sh yeah, Shaman for three. And um, attach an energy. To okay, so yeah, what I do here is I decide to just go for a Flash Ray. And oh, Lysander the Shaman because I haven't supported yet. I don't think so. I decided to Lysander the Shaman go down to one prize and just flash ray for the knockout here. So yeah. So he ends up going down to uh, one prize. Um, pretty far behind at this point. Um, he didn't have the opportunity to get the uh, Mega Ray going all the way. If he had one shot the uh, Tapu Koko there, he probably wins this game uh, right there. Um, but with all the energy on there, uh, I can just maybe take a prize off of uh, Knockout here. Two prizes off a EX Pokemon. Um, the Jolteon's still kind of a problem at this point though. With the Flash Ray, he can basically just stall me out of the whole game. Um, negating anything. My only outs at this point, having played the uh, escape rope already, I believe, are just uh, any Lysanders and taking prices elsewhere uh, if he decides to leave the Jolteon out in the active position. Um, at this point, I'm trying to figure out whether I, um, I'm going for a Lysander play or possibly an N down to 1. But I figured with as many cards as he had in his hand that he probably had it anyway. So I was just kind of going for the prize knockout. Um, also taking everything uh, a little bit off his bench for the damage. And hopefully just um, reducing a little bit of damage from a Mega Ray play. Or even the Raichu if he gets that out again. Um, he's still got pretty much all the energy devoted to the Jolteon at that point still. Um, so just kind of not one-shotting anything just kind of picking away at me stalling me out some more so um yeah like i just trying to stall out just trying to find like the pieces just of win the game at this point so i believe i ultra ball here um you were trying to get enough pokemon for the knockout yeah i was trying to hit a dc mega turbo and retreat and then just 
ammo ammo break for the game, but I don't have it yet, so I'm just go keeping on digging. And at this point, my deck is really thin, so I got to be careful not to deck out, which is one of the many problems I have playing this deck. Like when I just go through my deck so quick, and if I'm not careful, I could just easily deck out like that. So. I think you had also kind of thrown some uh, Pokemon into the discard at this point, um, whether Knockout or Sycamore and stuff away, Ultra Balling, anything. Um, so uh, I think there's one play a little bit later, if not this turn, uh, where you do come up uh, like 20, 20 or 30 damage short with a Mega Ray, Emerald Break, because um, you could only get... Um, like six or seven out on the bench instead of the full eight. Yeah, that was a big misplay that I did. I should have just flash raid, but not knowing for 180 because he's about because what I do go for is I do just decide to DC Mega Turbo and hit for 180. But then after I do that, you're gonna see something really uh, creative here. He's going to he's gonna yeah he's gonna bench the uh, second Tapu Coco. Arrow Trail, bring that up, and then he's going to max potion all the damage that was on that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that one had, uh, I believe, like 140 damage on it, or, or this another? something like 100, 120. Enough damage on there, um, where you just play the max lexers, and, um, or not the max lexers, the max potion in this deck, because uh, once you move all the energies, um, to the new fresh uh, Tapu Koko, you can just max potion away all the energy. There's nothing there. Um, really cool play with the deck. Um, Here you decided to field blow my sky field away and a uh, spirit lamp. The tool doesn't matter, but the stadium is what matters. Bench limiting my bench back down to five, which is a big deal at this point because I am really low on resources. So. You're really low on a deck, I noticed too. So, so we didn't see that max elixir move, or not max elixir, the max potion maybe, move. Maybe that, maybe that was another game. I can't remember. I th that may have been game three. Yeah, but that's actually a really smart tech for this deck. And yeah, it was probably just setting this one up in game two for uh, the last knockout, I believe. Um, because we still got the jolting on out front. For a I think I think I might have ended up just like passing this turn possibly. Uh, yeah, I think I yeah, did. Yeah, He's yeah, yeah. He, I'd already passed this turn. Um, yeah. So like I couldn't damage from the flash ray, so ended up just passing and hoping to survive here. Hopefully he doesn't get like everything he needs on the bench again to get a mega ray out and then uh, destroy one of the uh, Tapu Cocos. Um, and I had enough energy in the field if I could pull another one to possibly get another Tapu Koko out, the third one. Uh, play four in the deck. Uh, not sure if I had thrown one away at this point in the discard or not. Um, I know there was at least one left either in prize or in the deck. <clears throat> and he's still just trying to, uh, get some more of a bench out there again trying to find some more of the cards he needs basically the uh, energies and or mega turbos he needs at this point to kind of rebuild the Rayquaza get the bench damage going with the Emerald Bright so right now if, if his uh, Jolteon was installing you I'd feel pretty comfortable if I were you Jeff because uh, if you pull a couple more Lysanders, you can just take out the uh, Mega Rays. And he just needs one more Lysander. It looks like he's down. Or how many prizes you got left, Jeff? It looks like three. Uh, looks like he has three. Three. At this point. three at this point. Okay, so yeah, you just need literally. You know, I counted your discard. You At this point, you had two Via Seekers left, plus maybe a Lysander. So you were in pretty good shape at that point. Yeah, so at the at the end of this game, I knew from an Ultra Ball what the rest of my deck was. It was, in fact, one Lysander, a VS Seeker, and a Fighting Fura Belt, I believe was the third card. Um, so I knew I had basically like a 33% chance of um, 
taken this game just off the simple fact that you weren't going to knock me out with a flash ray. There was an item um, right here. Yeah. Oh, this is where you do it. I remember now. Uh, yeah, I, hit, I decided to hit for 180, and then I think this is where you did the, ma the uh, max potion play. Yeah, so what happened here, um, you retreated from the Jolteon with the flash ray, um, coming up just barely short with the uh, Mega Ray Emerald Break attack, only doing like 180 damage. Um, so I believe I had I might have had a Tapu Koko in in play or in my hand at this time um, with my last few cards here because I'm gonna end up um, getting a Tapu Koko I think um, retreating. Oh, it looks like it was a manual retreat there. Um, got enough energy there for the knockout on the um, Mega Ray. And we're knocking that out. I'll take um, two more prizes off of this, down to one prize each. And I kind of, I kind of knew I had the game at this point because he had re retreated the right. Uh, I think it was it was either Raichu or Jolteon. I think it was the Jolteon. Um, basically, taking that out of the active position, I knew with the last two cards, Lysander wins me the game. Yeah, I see the Lysander, I see the writing on the wall, I'm just going to pick them up and we're going to move to game number three, so. So game two uh, basically went through both of your guys' decks, like literally the whole deck. I mean, Jeff, you ended up having, what, like three, two cards left, and Josh, you only had two cards left, I Yeah, believe? it was two cards left in my deck, so I knew at that point he was going to win because he literally had, he said one VS Seeker, one Lysander left, but I knew he had one other VS Seeker, so it had to have been in the prizes at that point, which he probably picked up from. So So overall in the matchup, what do you think, Josh? Um, you know, what do you think about your chances against, you know, future Tapu Coco decks? Uh Tapu Coco, what I've learned is I can either just stream hexes preventing his arrow trail so he can't one shot me with Mega Ray. Or what I can do is just lock him out with Flash Ray and just go alone flash ray because assuming Tapu Koko does not play ranger if they do play ranger I don't I don't know why they would but they would just win that way but if most of the decks do, most of them do not play ranger so I feel like I would be feel pretty comfortable with just going flash ray at that point yeah I uh, definitely thought different like at the beginning because like I said earlier I mean you know Tapu Koko is able to hit Rayquaza and Shamans you know you you have a really heavy bench yes. most of the game and you know if they have popped the Lysanders I mean you're just giving them you know easy bait um so i at the beginning of this i was like uh this is a huge mismatch <laughs> but uh it seems like uh the mega Rayquaza deck actually is holding its own pretty pretty well against this uh even with the weakness i think that the, the raichu idea and the jolteon really definitely helps the deck for sure what about you jay uh the raichu kind of helps him out in his matchup uh in one or two areas uh hitting for weakness on any shamans i could possibly play in this matchup um with a with a pretty decently sized bench four or five you can do a uh, hundred damage you can either two shot if if I'm still setting up um, or with a full bench you can take two prizes and then uh, I have to deal with just a one prize attacker um, kind of kind of uh, helps out like mid game maybe and then um, generally we found in this match you probably just play the Jolteons uh, and just flash away because the Tapu decks at this point aren't playing cards like Pokemon Ranger or anything like that. So their only outs are going to be um, Escape Rope Lysander plays. Yeah, that's assuming if I have a bench. But if I just have Lone Jolteon, they pretty much lose the game. If Unless they're playing like hard like Enhanced Hammer or Team Flare Ground or something like that to try and remove my energies. But it looks like we are in, we've already started Game 3. I... Bench day, Rayquaza, attached to Spirit Link, and went to Ultra Ball to get a Hoopa. I'm using Scoundrel Ring right now. I decided to grab the, of course, Jolteon and the Shaman. Ooh, that's a lot of glare. And then a Mega Rayquaza as well. So, I'm already a decent turn for me. Um, so, proceeding. It's always good when you can start with Hoopa on turn one Mega Rayquaza. Yeah, for sure. So I'm shaming, drawing three cards right here. I believe here I go for a 
yeah, Tapu Lele. And then I think, yeah, I grabbed the Hex Maniac. I'm about to stream Hexes again in just a second. As soon as I play my bench some more, looks like. Oh, yeah, here I Ultra Ball for a Mega Rayquaza. Because if I Hex, I can just end my turn right there by Mega Evolving. Because And I feel pretty comfortable at that point after the Hex. I'll be in a pretty far lead at this point. And Jeff, it looks like you finally did not start with Tapu Lele. Uh, no, we start with uh, Tapu Koko this uh, game. Um, I don't really feel comfortable starting with Tapu Koko regardless. Like, honestly, the best starters are going to be either a Steam Siege Hoopa or the Jolteon in my decks. Um, mostly just because, like, you want to be able to max lux or anything to the bench, attach energies, and then use the Tapus from the hand. Uh, for their abilities. Uh, the Hex does kind of hurt turn one um, for anybody's setup, mostly just for the fact uh, in this matchup, uh, turn one, I'm probably not playing like um, making any plays with the Arrow Trail, but it does kind of hurt up any Tapu Lele plays with the um, Wonder Tag ability to find a supporter. Um, so at this point, I'm just like trying to set up as much as I can, attach energies, and I'm probably going to go for the uh, Lysander, um, Lysandering I think is Hoopa, um, and just kind of trying to stall him just a little bit for a turn so I can set up, get around the Hex Maniac so that I can set up with a, a bigger turn on the next one. But as you can see, I did rip the Escape Rub off the top, and then I decided to say it more. Hoping to hit a sky field and then a full bench with a DC and Mega Turbo. That's asking for a lot with Mega Ray, but it is possible. Um, if I do hit this, I'm just going to win the game at this point. But it looks like I did not find it. Uh, yeah, there's no... Yeah, I did not find it. Um, I remember whiffing literally everything out of that hand. I think that was all I did that turn. I think I just passed after that. Yeah, I just passed. Yeah, so this on this turn, I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, you had... Sycamore that turn, yes, and ended up throwing uh, a couple of uh, puzzles of time think, away uh, and a couple was, other cards. I think that was the next turn, if I remember correctly, because uh, or maybe it was this turn. I don't, I don't remember. It was either that last turn I did, or it was the, this coming turn. I can't remember exactly, but yes, like you said, I did. If I had a Skyfield in hand, or in on hand, I could just play that, play the puzzles, and just keep streaming hexes. But at that point, I, what would that do for you? Because he's still going to keep manually attaching energies and hitting me. So at that point, I'm just like, okay, I got to find something and just start getting going. Also kind of prevented you from doing the uh, extra bench damage, too. Because if you had the uh, Skyfield, you'd probably just get a knockout there and take game three single-handedly. I have no comment. <laughs> uh, like I said, this is, this is, my, this is for my first time seeing it. I mean, I've played it against Mega Rayquaza. I'm uh, new to the Tapo Coco deck, so uh, whatever you guys are telling me is just new information for me. Um, but, uh, yeah. So we're just going for a, another bigger hand here on my side. A Sycamore Way, two energies, and the Echo Arm. Um, the energies kind of hate getting rid of those, but... You just kind of need a new hand, get more max elixirs if you can. Uh, already attached for a turn, I believe. I think uh, what I had been looking for here, hopefully, would have been a uh, an escape rope if I hadn't already played that. Um, I would have attached an energy to the Steam Siege hoop and started just like pinging for a couple 20 uh, damage here and there so uh jeff with the tapu coco deck i see it possibly getting a lot of play because uh, it's not a bad card at all um what what nightmares do you think this deck will run into i know that it's, there's a lot of pretty obvious answers but i mean if, if you were running this deck what what nightmare matchups would you have um pretty much anything that uh, does extra damage based off of energy attach um it struggles pretty hard with like a uh, Espeon GX Wobbuffet type deck. Um, the 
I think Lycan Rock would be an issue as well. Uh, not just as, for the weakness. Not no no no. That that's what I was getting into. Uh, Tabu Coco doesn't have a weakness, so fight. Yes, oh yeah, you're right. Uh, fighting can be a problem, but majority it's not really going to be a problem because yes, you have energy removal, but they're if they hit a lot of max elixirs, it's normally not going to matter. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about the whole no weakness thing. That's actually that's pretty, pretty much nice. How all the Tapu cards are uh, kind of following the games because in the in the video games the Tapus have zero weakness and that's the one thing that really makes the tapu coco uh, a really uh, great deck um potentially a tier one deck um maybe not for like a month a couple weeks to a month uh it's missing one at least one card we got a new promo coming out for the baby tapu coco um is a really great attack uh does 20 damage to either everything or 20 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Um, you get that out there and it just kind of sets up everything you could possibly need for uh, potential one-shot KOs with a Tapu Koko GX. Um, but for right now, like fighting's not a weakness issue. Um, anything energy denial would be really tough to deal with uh lapras is probably another deck that you probably can't deal with with the with the tapu coco oh yeah and here is where you do the uh yeah you decide to arrow trail into the next one and then max potion all that damage like we were talking about earlier that is a really really good play probably the highlight if that doesn't make ESPN top 10, I don't know. What yeah, we're... it takes away potential uh, knockouts um, and just resets everything. Um, any damage he did was uh, negated to nothing that turn. So I'm assuming you run two in the deck, right? Um, right now, just two max potions, yes. Uh, eventually, we're going to get uh, reprints of like cards like uh, Super Scoop Up, and then you've got uh, another... Supporter coming out later, the Acerola that allows you to pick up damaged Pokemon and put them back into your hand. Um, it's very similar to the AZ uh, previously, um, with one or two minor differences. Those being that you can only pick up damaged Pokemon, but at the same time, I believe this one allows you to pick up everything attached to the Pokemon. So you can pick up energy, tools, and everything again. Um, as opposed to throwing them away in the discard. Yeah, that was the one downfall to AZ was the having to discard everything. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like a, a risk play most of the times for me when I used to run it in a couple decks. Uh, and again, it's just really good for like um, preventing uh, KOs, um, anything that was damaged on the bench, just freeing up space, um, allows for different plays in the game. Um, we'll have a really cool format once that card comes out too. Yeah, I'm definitely excited about the game and how much it's going to change once the new rotation comes out. Um, so uh, back to the match. Um, so I, I'm assuming it's uh, your turn, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, it is my turn. I'm just going through my deck. I literally have like two cards left in my deck at this point, I'm pretty sure. Either that or pretty close. Um, I am emerald breaking for a knockout right here. It's 210, but... Um, it looks like, yeah, now we're on to Jeff's turn. It looks like you burned through a lot of your deck. You weren't lying about uh, no, that, that cooking that deck pretty yeah, quickly. That was the turn I think I sycamored uh, the th like two or three puzzles, and there is no way I was going to be able to, if, I, if we went to the late game, I was literally going to lose that game. So, yeah. I was kind of digging for uh, Skyfield and some extra energy plays there, I believe. Uh, so right now on my end, we're probably just um, trying to reset my board. Um, I'm playing in here because he did take a couple of prizes. He's going to go down to four, um, and I believe I take two prizes already. Uh, so I'll also go down to four here. Um, I might have had the ability there to play uh, Sycamore as well, but um, probably had stuff in my hand I didn't want to throw away that turn either. Um, also, just leaving the, the one prize attacker out there, I realized later this was probably a mistake because I was, tr uh, at this point, the Jolteon on the bench had 140 damage on it. 
Um, and I knew I made a mistake leaving that out there active because I could just take two prizes later with a um, energy attached on the Hoopa. Um, but he's going to do something here in a second that actually kind of helped and changed the uh, tandem in this match just a little bit. Yeah, it looks like you played another Sycamore there, Josh, even with a very, very, very low card count uh, in your deck. I, yeah, I put it into my hand. Uh, I didn't, I'm pretty sure I played it, but... I, oh, yeah, this is where I had, like, nine cards left in my deck. I didn't realize it. I thought I was going to deck out if I played Sycamore, so I wasn't too sure. Oh, no, I grabbed an escape. Yeah, you did play the, the Yeah, Sycamore. so this, this is where he... He, he, I don't know if it was a misplay on his end. I definitely left that out there in in a pinch. But he played the escape rope, allowed my Steam Siege Hooper to go back to the bench, not get knocked out. I'm going to give up two prizes here regardless. Um, but the Steam Siege Hooper just gives me the ability to um, take him to a one prize game on his end. And then I'm going to take a knockout going down to uh, one or two prizes myself with uh, the damage on the uh, Jolteon on the bench, getting a knock out there. Um, at the same time, we're still trying to set up energy, because at this point, I basically just need like energy, max elixir, and then a Lysander for the win, I believe. No, you just need energy, max elixir, because it's weak to lightning. But what you decide to do here, yeah, what you were going to do is retreat into the hoop, but once you super, well, you're going to dig for it. Were you down to what? How many prizes do you have left, Jeff? Three? Uh, Looks like he has like four. Four prizes four. there, but I was going to take two off of the Jolteon that turn. Yeah, because it does 20 to two any Pokemon on the field. So he was going to do 20. I think you did 20 to Jolteon and then 20 to the active Mega Ray. So. Yeah. Which the 20 on the... Uh... Jolteon. Jolteon knocked it out, I believe, right? Because it looks yes. like it has 140. Yes, it, will. it will. It's very... Yeah, it was, it, I just the 140 deep. early was very, very good in that sense with, in combination with the Hoopa. Like, it was really good there. Yeah, we'll see that play very soon. He's going to second more here. More than likely, finding the energy. If he gets to discard the other two cards off he had, but he remember, I told him, so... He's going to draw seven. It looks like... And yeah, had, and he didn't find the energy, but he did have a max elixir. I had the max elixir, and I had just thrown some more energies back in with the super rod, kind of so, uh, upping the chances of hitting one of those max elixirs pretty easily. So yeah, he didn't find the energy, but he did hit a max elixir. Like he was saying, he had a very good chance of hitting it with the super rod. But he is going to knock out, he's going to finish his turn here by attaching the max elixir energy to the uh, Hoopa. And then he's going to knock out my Jolteon and do 20 to the Rayquaza in just a second. Uh, no comment. <laughs> yeah. I, I will uh, point out uh, one thing I had in my hand, and I, I almost misplayed here. I thought about it like as soon as I um, saw it. I had a, another like uh, Aether Paradise Comfort uh, Conservation Stadium in play or in my hand. And I knew if he, if I played that, um, it drops his uh, bench down, but I also knew he could probably just get rid of that uh, damaged Jolteon, and I still needed to knock that out. So I kind of left him with the Skyfield, also realizing that um, with my bench size, I could still uh, play stuff with the Skyfield in play as well. Um, any other Cocos or Leleys potentially. So yeah, as at this point, I was looking. I had a Via Secret hand. I was looking for a Lysander, but with that thick of a discard, I did not have a Lysander in my discard. Later on, I had realized I only play one Lysander because of how fast I go. But yeah, it, later on, I realized it was prized, so that kind of hurt a bit. So I literally had to end him and hope he didn't hit what he needed in the next turn. And just at this point, it's it's do or die because. I knock it out and ha have to hope he just doesn't hit max elixir energy. So, uh, Another thing to point out here in this match at this point in time is time uh, more or less called at this point. Uh, we're on the last three turns. Uh, I believe Josh is turn one at this point. I believe I was turn zero. Uh, so kind of game three, end of time and everything. We got all three games in. 
going down to the wire. Yeah, because we're both playing aggressive fast decks, so we shouldn't be going to time that often. But, uh, yeah, it comes down to this turn right here. You have to hit the max elixir energy, which I believe you do. So, yeah, we're on Jeff's last turn, and this is his, uh... This is his final turn. This is his final turn, and this is where he takes the victory. He's gonna train his mail for the Sycamore. Uh, he's thinking about it. Yeah, so... So... You know the video is concluding. Um, so people watching this, uh, this is our first ever uh, playtesting video. Um, this is uh, Josh and Jeff. They're both part of the Team Nova circuit. Uh, we're going to be hitting the Pokemon circuit um, as a new team, and uh, they're helping you know promote you know Nova Circuit's brand. Um, so if you guys like it, uh, leave a comment and you know leave a like and subscribe to the channel to see more. We're definitely going to try to do this at least once a week, maybe once every two weeks, uh, depending on you know our times and our schedules with our uh, you know work and personal life. But uh, uh, this was definitely fun, and I'm excited to see how well we do out there on the Pokemon circuit. Uh, oh, I know we got internationals and a League Cup coming up soon. So, uh, but this is uh, concluding the video, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, watching Jeff take out Josh. Um, remember, just like and subscribe.